Welcome back. We're doing take two of the Tanya Munt technique, which you can see can be a little frustrating, but luckily I figured out some tips and tricks that help make it beautiful anyway, so stay tuned for that. But first, coming this fall, live painting is back with Heather Mater Art members only Sunday Lives on YouTube. So if you want to be a part of that, you need to join my channel. Join it for perks, private coaching, live painting, content exclusive just for you, 20% off painting, sneak peeks, and lots of giveaways. So we will see you soon and you should become a member today so you can be a part of all of that. If you're wondering how you join, it's really easy. There's a button under every video that says join and that's what you click to become a channel member. You can see all the different perks that you get and there's it starts as low as a price of a cup of coffee $4.99. There's different membership levels, one which includes a live one-on-one -on -one chat every single month with me. It could be uh, business related, we could paint together, but it's live support. So if you're interested in that, uh, looking forward to it. Now this lady, Tanya Munt, mixed media artist. Okay, her name has been in my mouth a lot lately because I'm in love with her work and she helped um, share, I should say she did share her technique. In the last video, this is my first attempt, you can see I did just okay. It was not fantastic, it was okay. This is a not an easy technique and I thought, you know what, I should practice and maybe I could do a little better. And I did do a little better and a little worse and a little better and a little worse. <laughs> But I'm going to show you all the things I learned in my trial and also the supply list for this is in the description box if you're looking for all the supplies. If you want an in-depth uh, tutorial for the supplies, check out my last video which I go over every single thing that you need to accomplish this technique. Now for this one, I decided to do a hummingbird. I've never done a hummingbird in my art before, so I chose a pane of glass that would fit the paper, um, the design that I chose, and it just barely did, and I decided to make it work. Um, so I'm using a different kind of glue gun. This one I just found in the clearance section at Hobby Lobby for like $2. And I was just kind of playing around to see if it would work because it's small and my hands are small. So I was trying to see if that might be a better fit for me. But you know what I discovered, no matter, how, no matter how many glue guns I have, it's just a difficult technique. And um, some of the tips and tricks that I learned doing this, the first one is don't ever touch the glass, uh, the glue gun with the, with, with the actual tip of the glue gun. And that was something that um, I was doing in the last one. So if you avoid that, you just get a lot less strings and you're kind of just laying down the line over the top of the design and that really helps. The other thing is to keep moving. Um, go faster than you think you need to. This is sped up like 700 times. <laughs> it took a long time for me to do this so uh, you know I think I did okay though. The very first um, attempt was just mediocre and I felt like this one I got some better lines clearer, less strings, um, you know, so I'm not, I'm not too unhappy and this is what the outline looks like. So I'm not too mad. And when you take it off of the glass, you can really see, I mean, off of the, uh, design, you can really kind of see where you're at there and it's pretty good. Now a lot of those strings disappear when you transfer it or you can use little scissors to cut them um, or you can use your torch to kind of burn them off. So there's a few different ways to remove the strings. So the next thing you want to do is spray it with the 70% alcohol and then get a sharp blade. I used a razor blade because that's what I had and start loosening it from the glass. Um, this is the part where some things can go wrong and if your lines are too thin they will break so that's one of the uh, the other tips i wanted to give you make sure that you do use thick enough lines that when you loosen it from the glass they don't just disintegrate because that did happen to me on a couple of those lines you can always correct it when you get it 
on your canvas or whatever, but it's just easier if you don't have to. So some of those lines are gonna break. Now, I transferred it to a piece of parchment paper and this is when everything started to go bad. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you my mistake so you don't have to make it. Um, one of the things was I decided to try the industrial glue, 3M, this is a high strength spray adhesive glue. This is the one that Tanya had suggested that I try. Now folks, this is real time. By the time I sprayed it and just started to get it over to the canvas, it was already sticking together. So this was not my experience last time. Last time I had plenty of time. In fact, it wasn't even sticky enough with that Dollar Tree glue. And before I know it, all it was like a spider web. You know, a spider web that just sticks together. And it had just totally destroyed some of the delicate patterns. I tried to wipe some of the excess glue off and I couldn't even move it. I couldn't even adjust it. It was just, it was, it was sad. It was like a spider web. And I just thought, well, you know, maybe I could fix it. You can do some repair, like if the transfer doesn't work well for you, then you can take your glue gun and make a few lines here and there and repair a few things if that happens. But this glue was so intense and so fast, it dried so quickly within seconds. There was just no way. There was no recovering from this. So at this point, I just had to call it, and um, yeah. I decided to pick it up off of there before it was not able to come off. And then you'll see the pieces, like that piece right there that I'm really having trouble getting off, that was the piece that I put directly on the canvas, you guys. So here's my next tip. If you are great, at drawing and you feel really confident, go ahead and put it right on the canvas, but you better not make a mistake. Because <laughs> if you make a mistake, that does not come off. It does not come off. So um, yeah, that's one of the advantages to her technique as well. If you do make a mistake, you can literally start over with a fresh piece of glass and yep, just, just begin again. <laughs> So I did this, this would be my second bird, and I think it turned out really good, and maybe even a little bit better than the first one that I did. So even that little bit of practice really paid off. So we start over with the 90%, I'm sorry, the 70% alcohol again, and then the razor blade chuck again, and now that my lines are all thicker this time, and they aren't so thin as the first ones that I created. See how much easier they're coming up. It's coming up all in one piece, and that's what we want. We want that solid piece there. And then I just move it to my parchment paper again, and this time I'm gonna go ahead and use the Dollar Tree glue because it just worked better. I pat it dry with a paper towel, although the alcohol will dry really quickly, but just to be safe. And then I just spray it with that spray adhesive. And I did a heavy, pretty heavy coat, I would say. Um, and then I turned it over onto the prepared canvas. This canvas could be anything. I've seen a lot of you talking about using it for your pores, for your gel print um, collages. And the thing I like about the, the spray adhesive from the Dollar Tree is I did get the um, placement right, but you could move it a little bit if you wanted to. I just happened to kind of slap it on there right where I wanted it, but um, yeah, and then I just, I just did that. I just covered it with uh, parchment, made sure all of the, you know, places that were glued down was touching the canvas, and then I put a bunch of heavy stuff on top. And that's it. And I just let it set. I think I let it set for, you know, six to eight hours or something. Just to be on the safe side. Now when you get it all done, just take everything heavy off of there, flip it over, peel back the parchment paper, and voila! The big reveal! And it sticks great, and you don't have to worry about this coming off your canvas. It's literally adhered to your canvas, 
and I love the way this turned out. I can't wait to show you what I do with it next. Okay, now what? You have it securely on your background, your beautiful pour or your gel print um, or your collage or your mixed media piece or whatever it is that you're trying to do and now what? Well, now you need to fill it with something. So for me, I decided to use fluid paints and I made mine with just Floetrol, you can see here, and some golden fluid um, paint. Mix those together and I just tried out a bunch of different colors. One of the things I did this time that was different was I used Q-tips um, to fill the um, spaces with. I have, I, I did in the past use those little droppers and they are um, helpful to have at your disposal but honestly I love these Q-tips and to me it was just way easier to control um, and plus if I didn't like something I could actually use a dry Q-tip and then dab out the colors that I didn't like or if I messed up or something so that would be another tip and trick that you could use um, and I'm also doing something right here I want to bring you in closer to see I'm mixing colors so see how I'm using multiple colors in the same uh, section by doing this you create some gradation effects and I just basically swirl those together with a little stick so that's how I achieved that so as long as we're at it I just want to give you a few more little um, tricks for filling if you don't want to mix paints you can also use uh, soft bodied paints with a tiny little smidgen of water um, you could use two paints and just add water. You could use premixed pouring paints or you can even use pigments. The white that I used in here is this little piggy pigment and a little bit of Floetrol. So there's lots of options for filling the center of this if you don't want to necessarily uh, mix up paints and you don't have to use golden fluids. The reason I love golden fluids is because their colors don't shift when they dry. They, they're they just lovely <laughs> and they are brilliant and look amazing and sharp. Um, as, as brilliant as they do dry as they do wet and that's one of the reasons golden is you know probably realistically one of my all-time favorite companies. So. Then I just work on the tail in the same way, adding the different gradations of color that I'd like to mix, and I use my little stick, just an incense stick, <laughs> and then I work on the wings. And then it might be a more efficient way to do this, but I really um, like the way this come out, so I'm, I'm fine with the time it took. Now you can see, um, I put one color at the end and added white, that pearl, that list this little piggy uh, pigment in the center, and then use the little um, stick to swirl those together, and then that creates the gradation that goes down to the other color at the bottom. So it turns into kind of that pale lavender, and then the reddish lavender so and that's how the wings were created this is this part was actually kind of relaxing for me truthfully I enjoyed this part a lot and then you get something that looks like this in the end and don't forget you know we're still going to add the final touch that makes this piece really special and that final touch is the Liquitex Antique Gold Pen. And we go in and make all of those glue lines burnished with that beautiful gold, the antique gold. It just really transforms this from, you know, something sort of average to something really beautiful. And this is my absolute favorite part. <laughs> I don't know, it, it's not just because it's the end, it's just, there's just something about it that makes it really, really fun to do. 
and I don't know, I just really enjoy it. Um, if you make a little mistake, you can see I kind of got a little bit on the canvas right there. I just took a little bit of um, alcohol on a Q-tip and that pulled it off of my canvas. So you do have to be careful or you could make a line where you don't want a line to be right on your canvas and that's no, no bueno. But this is a really, really fun part. It also covers up the mistakes. A lot of you asked if you could just use gold uh, glue to begin with, and yes, you can, but then when you put the paint in there, see how um, it, it, it kind of it, it gets up on the sides a little bit of the glue. And so this is the way to kind of fix that. Now before we forget, I just wanted to say thank you so much again to Tanya Munt for allowing us to share her technique. It's really vulnerable for an artist to share their techniques to the world and that's what she did and I really think it was very brave and beautiful of her to share that with me so I could share it with you and we want to give her a big thank you. So on top of that, if you enjoy what you're seeing in this channel, please subscribe, uh, share, and feel free to give me a thanks, a cup of coffee, a tip, or use my Amazon shop. All the links are in the description box for the supplies as well. And I'm going to show you the end product. Look how pretty the gold is when it's all said and done. It's such a special technique and I'm so privileged that Tanya showed me her version of the way to do this beautiful technique. This painting is, I think, just turned out really special. <laughs> so it is available if you're interested. All my artwork is available. Also, don't forget about the live painting and the channel memberships coming this fall. Members only Sunday lives on YouTube. You can be a part of it too. All you have to do is join my channel. There's all kinds of perks that you can get. Look at all the perks. So I will see you soon. It's really easy to become a member as well. All you have to do is underneath the video, uh, first subscribe, and then there's a little join button. See it? Just click join and it'll take you to the channel membership uh, page. From uh, the price of a cup of coffee, you could be an inspired member, a VIP member, an ultimate member, or even a platinum member, where you would get one-on-one -on -one time with me. We can talk about painting, we can paint together, you can ask advice, anything you want. So thanks Tanya Munt, and as always, thanks for watching, and I can't wait to make more art videos just for you. Bye guys!